Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drinks. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yay. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. I'm Nathan Simmons. And I'm here to tell you, don't be scared. Just go eat your cookies. <laughs> and this is the Silver Linings Playlist. A podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings. Yeah, man. Nathan, wow, what a movie. <laughs> what did you think? Did you did you hate it? I haven't we haven't talked about it at all. We we have not. We have not. Um no, I didn't hate. I did not hate. Okay. Did not love though. It's an in, it's a yeah, it's an interesting one for sure. It it fe- doesn't it feel like and we're just jumping right in. We sure, sure. we covered 1983's The Dead Zone, based on the novel by Stephen King, directed by David Cronenberg, written by Jeffrey Bohm. Mm-hmm. Th- doesn't it feel like you're watching a like a like three seasons of a television show condensed into one film? Yeah. <laughs> It felt like a made-for-TV movie that, yeah, they were going to make it to a miniseries or something. And they're like, fuck it, let's just make it a movie. It is. It's it's weird because... So the book is very episodic. Mm-hmm. Like, it's very much like... And there's dueling storylines. Like, you... You're following Greg Stilson as much as you're following Johnny in a lot of the book, which like Greg kind of pops out at the end in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. He kind of just announces himself like, by the way, I'm the movie's villain. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And there's there's this weird thing where like the book is very much like you follow Johnny over the course of like uh, several years Mm -hmm. uh, as his like condition progresses. And this movie, it like. I think they made the wise choice to kind of like break, try to break it into a three act structure, but it really does feel like we're watching three episodes of a TV series Mm -hmm. that have been stitched together. They just happen to be directed by one of my favorite directors. Okay. So, well, (laughs) first off, uh, listener, you're not hearing Mally because Mally cannot be with us this week. Right. He had a good excuse this time. Like the, the, uh, we're recording this right on the eve of, uh, IOTC, Mm -hmm. uh, striking and, but reaching a tentative deal mm-hmm. so he is of course a part of the union so he's he's all over the place right now which is fine he's <laughs> going to be going around shaking hands and seeing what they know <laughs> <laughs> looking into the future <laughs> and stopping uh future u.s presidents from blowing us all up that's right so that's what he's he's on assignment right now hallelujah <laughs> <laughs> but okay so a couple of things this is my first time seeing this movie dead zone yeah I, this, this is also may come as a shock this is me breaking my david cronenberg cherry whoa I've never seen any of his movies. No kidding. I know. Wow. I know. I'm, you haven't. I, I know. I know. I've I've tried watching Scanners twice, uh-huh. but for some reason, for one reason or another, I just get distracted and end up doing something else. Like I make it not very far. You know what? I feel like you you would fuck with Videodrome. I bet I would. I feel I, like I feel like I would fuck with The Brood too, but I've never seen The it. Brood Rules, uh, Dead Ringers. You would one hundred percent fuck with Dead Ringers. Mm-hmm. You'd fuck with The Fly, dude. You've got to see The Fly. Come I know, on, I, know, I can't. I know. And I'm not one of those bros who's just like I can't believe you haven't seen. But like this, <laughs> genuinely knowing you as know. a person surprises me i know <laughs> uh, there's a lot of like blank spots in my my filmography like Same. i still have never seen casablanca oh wow i've never seen like a bunch of the big big ones sure but you know i'm gonna get to it eventually i right i for listeners i am qualified i've seen over 2000 movies <laughs> yeah so no I, you're you, there. you know what you're talking about like, <laughs> yeah. yeah no just just knowing the kind of shit that you like i, I feel like you would yeah you'd really get into his and there's uh look peek behind the curtain um i'm i'm struggling between two cronenberg movies for next season okay. that i want to put on the schedule so yeah hopefully hopefully that'll happen well maybe i should wait from watching others and until you guide me through them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I, I do want to see that one. I do want to see that Robert Pattinson one too. That Mally. Oh, Cosmopolis. Yes, Cosmopolis. Yeah, I do want to see that. Yeah. But I just, I just haven't. It's pretty good. Uh, uh, I mean, Pattinson's really good in it. Yeah. Oh yeah, without question. And then yeah, History of Violence. Like some of his later stuff. I want to see Eastern Provinces in, yeah. in History of Violence more than any of them. Yeah. Uh, I, you would love a History of Violence. I feel like I rules. would. I feel like I would. Yeah. So we're doing the dead zone. Yeah, this is 28 years recently, actually, like yeah. a couple weeks ago, that since this movie uh, premiered. Nathan, I told you off air that there is one big note I have for this movie. Oh, sure. That I feel like you would appreciate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this movie. Oh no. Is just an alternate version of the room. Oh, okay, follow no. me here. Because of Johnny. His name is Johnny. Johnny. Sarah's got a son named Denny. Oh my fucking god. She's <laughs> in a relationship, and yet she tries to sleep with other men. Right. And I was like, get the like. 
when I realized his the kid's name was Danny and that his name was Johnny, I was like, get the fuck out to, of To here. the point where he says uh, his name's Danny and she goes, Denny. I know. I was like, I wrote, literally wrote all caps. No, his name is Denny. <laughs> That's not a name. Come on, Sarah. Three's a crowd. <laughs> That's not a name. <laughs> Denny is not a name. I'm sorry. I, how did I not catch that? Right? I should put. I should return my room card. Like that's fucking <laughs> if, insane. If her name was Lisa, I would have turned the movie off as soon as Diddy was revealed. It just lied and said I watched the rest of it. <laughs> Everybody betray me. I've been in a coma for three years. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's wild. That's all I have to say up front about okay. uh, Dead Zone. Sure. So why did you pick this one specifically to put on the schedule this week? So I I love the book that this is based on mm -hmm. and it is it's it's kind of it's interesting because it's generally not considered one of king's best but i feel like it has some of his most human characters and there's something i also as a as a kid when the tv sh there's a tv series adaptation starring anthony michael hall that ran for like six seasons mm -hmm. that i was super into as a kid uh as a teenager mm -hmm. and then this movie i think for my money contains uh, one of Walken's most interesting performances. It's certainly interesting. <laughs> I think he's, I think he's dialed in in a way where it's like this is like right before he started to turn into a cartoon character. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And there's some, I don't know. I he he carries himself like one of the walking wounded. Mm -hmm. Like he he see you can see like the PTSD on his face. Uh, there's just something uh, really vulnerable about him in a way that you don't ever see from Christopher walking i think it's a very atypical performance even though it gets a little hammy at points but there's a certain kind of um melodrama to this movie that i think makes it work and i think a lot of that is due to cronenberg's direction because he was moving slightly away from the more like nasty gritty horror that he had been doing mm -hmm. and also i think it contains michael common's best score i love the music in this movie okay and so there's just i don't know there's a there's a tone to it it doesn't all work for me and there's parts of it where i'm just like god i wish you had taken five more minutes you know with this moment yeah. but it, it does it's one of those movies that feels like we gotta fucking we gotta keep going you gotta keep moving to the point where like I mean, we'll get there, but the smash to credits oh, is yeah. like wild. I, I wrote down, I was like, boy, this movie wraps up quick. Yeah. <laughs> We get out of there. <laughs> it does trim a lot of the fat from the uh, King story, but I think you lose a lot of really interesting character work. That being said, uh, it was one of the first movies I put on the list uh, for this season because it just I don't know. It's a it's a movie that like I, I like to revisit when it starts to get cold outside. This movie feels like it's always winter. Oh, it's very cold. And yeah. I don't know. There's just something something about it that keeps me coming back to it. Well, how many times have you seen it? Uh, probably only three or four times. Mm, okay. I just, I, I don't know. There's just something about it that I, that, that really speaks to the nihilist in me but yeah. also like the romantic in me at the same time like this is a very strange movie in that it it toes the line between being a nothing matters kind of movie and an everything matters kind yeah of yeah i could see that yeah i i don't know i i don't want to rain on the parade i no. just i thought this movie was really bad oh really <laughs> interesting i'm starting to think about it now i I might be in the minority, mm -hmm. but I don't think Christopher Walken's a good actor. I think he's I think he is capable of interesting choices. I yes, think that he chooses fair. not to do them sometimes. Yeah. A lot of the time, especially now. Like, I think he's good in the deer hunter. Yeah. But he's barely in the deer hunter. Sure. Yeah. It's in, it's weird because an, a, a, this is another one of those where I'm like, huh, you know, maybe this is one that I. I just saw at the exact right time when I was a teenager and it Maybe. just stuck with me. But yeah, I, I think I think there's a lot there's a lot that's interesting about it. I, I'm really I've been looking forward to talking about it. I had a feeling that it might not work for you because it is very like it's very soap opera. -y. Yes, it is. <laughs> that's a good way to describe it because I wrote down. I was like, I don't know what it is, but there's something about the direction in the performances and the editing and the cinematography is yes. just not working for me. But that that makes sense. I will say it's not fair that this is your first Cronenberg movie <laughs> because it's it is not it is extremely atypical for him. Sure. But when I think when it works, it really works. Yeah, there's some good stuff in there for sure. Mm -hmm. But yeah, overall, 
I don't know. I mean, we'll talk about it at the end, like <laughs> possibility of revisiting it, but we'll see. Sure. All right. Well, then without further ado, listener, if you're not familiar uh, familiar with the movie we're talking about today, The Dead Zone, why don't I uh, fill you in on some of it? Why don't I grab this movie by the hand and <laughs> see what's going on with it? So as we mentioned, the year is 1983. The director is David Cronenberg. Uh, the movie stars Christopher Walken, Brooke Adams, Martin Sheen. Herbert Lom and Tom Skerritt. Mm -hmm. uh, the budget, and this is interesting. The budget was ten million dollars back in nineteen eighty three. Yeah, which is interesting because we just saw a movie this week, and Nathan that also had a budget of ten million dollars, <sighs> and it's forty years later. Yeah, <laughs> I can't believe that. But uh, the movie managed to gross only twenty million dollars worldwide, mm. but it currently sits at an eighty nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Nice. That's actually higher than I expected. Way I mean, it's higher a than I Again, expected. It, it, it's a movie that I like. <laughs> it's also uh, fifty something percent higher than that movie we watched this weekend that we'll talk about yes. later this season. <laughs> Probably. And uh, yeah, Roger Ebert loved this movie. Yeah. Gave it three and a half stars, which shocked me. Mm -hmm. Genuinely shocked me. All right. Well, listener, if you're still not familiar with what we're talking about and you want to get a little bit more into it. How about we uh, listen to the trailer? Mm -hmm. And uh, I've never seen this trailer. I'm assuming you haven't either. I haven't, no. It's a trailer from the 80s, so buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> it's 12 minutes long. <laughs> and they say the title about six times. <laughs> the Dead Zone. Mm -hmm. You'll never escape the Dead Zone. <laughs> You'll, yeah. <laughs> a narration that barely knows what the movie is. <laughs> <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. John Smith's a man of action. <laughs> <laughs> that haircut, fucking nerd. It's wild. <laughs> You've been in oh, the coma. Wait a this is a newer trailer because yes. it has the new Lionsgate look. So this must have been like the Blu-ray trailer or something. Yeah, I think you're right. The house is burning. Your daughter's in the house. It's not too late. You're the talk of the town. Because I got my head bashed in and I'm still here to talk about it. Because you have the power of second sight. Oh, the inverted <laughs> black and white <laughs> images at the end? Ugh, yeah. The worst. Every mid-2000s trailer. Oh, yeah. Use your help. It has to do with these murders we've been having. The Castle Rock killer. I That shot in the tunnel, I think, is great. Yeah, it's good. I saw his face. Wow, the trailer's making it look like he and the sheriff are hunting the politician yeah. instead of a instead of the serial killer. I would kill him. You'd never get away alive. It doesn't matter. I'm not crazy, you know. Those headaches are getting worse, aren't they? The ice has gone the bright. Stronger and more powerful, so the body weakens. God has seen fit to bless you with this gift. You should use it. What a good looking man. Tom Skerritt. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. Like, the, maybe the best mustache we've had this season? Maybe. It's definitely up there. Yeah, it's interesting the uh, how how that trailer tried to sell people. That trailer tried to misdirect people about a movie that was at least 20 years old when that trailer was made. Oh, at least. Yeah, I mean. That's so strange. I think it's also worth mentioning Martin Sheen doesn't show up until like. An hour and 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. Yeah. And God bless him. Makes the movie so much better when he shows oh, up. Oh, he's he is. He doesn't. Martin Sheen doesn't just chew the scenery. He fucking purees it mm -hmm. and like puts it in a caulking gun and then shoots it into his mouth. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's great because like i kept imagining like what if this was his character from the west wing oh like, yeah just psychotic this is a prequel to it yeah <laughs> how about we quickly describe what the dead zone is for people that may not be aware so in the dead zone uh a teacher english teacher named johnny smith uh which uh, i so is... wish i had the twilight zone theme song to play right now <laughs> <laughs> consider john smith the uh, he he is in a car accident. Mm -hmm. uh, he goes on a date with his girlfriend Sarah, and then he's in a car accident that leaves him in a coma for five years. When he wakes up, he has the ability to see into the future or people's pasts. He has like a psychic ability, uh, second sight, mm -hmm. and the ability is killing him. He's uh, in the book. It's a lot more. Um, uh, obvious. They they get into the fact that he ha he has a tumor that's killing him that's possibly related to his abilities. Mm. 
Um, but in the in the movie, they're just like he has really fucking bad headaches. Yep. And every time he uses his powers, he gets weaker. So, uh, yeah, he kind of becomes like a, a social pariah. People either want to know everything about him or they're scared of him. Uh, and he retreats from the world until he is asked to help uh, solve a murder tri- murder case. Uh, and that kind of kicks the uh, kicks him back into the wor- the world of the living. <laughs> That's interesting because we talked about how this felt like a TV season. Yes. That seems like season one. Yes, maybe. And then season two is why don't we just watch this guy tutor this kid for about 20 minutes? <laughs> yes. If I recall correctly, the the Anthony Michael Hall, the USA TV series had a two hour pilot. Oof. And the, the plot of the pilot episode was he w- helped solve the Castle Rock Strangler uh, case. That's bizarre. <laughs> yeah. And then like Greg Stilson was like a main supporting character on the show because Johnny was trying to figure out like how he was going to cause Armageddon or something like that it's been so long since i watched it yeah, but yeah yeah it does feel like so much of this like it could fill a whole season of television oh yeah and the book is very much like that it kind of you know jumps around in time because things get progressively worse for johnny and his mother is a much bigger character she's like a total jesus freak who thinks he's possessed by the devil of course she is well, yeah it's it's, stephen king <laughs> that's a very stephen king thing yep. stephen king has some weird hang-ups with moms moms that are over religious overly religious and he he likes to describe obese people mm-hmm. have you noticed that mm-hmm. like that's a that's a major thing for like johnny's mom in the book might as well be uh margaret white from <laughs> carrie <laughs> mm-hmm. um, it's very strange mm-hmm. but yeah the the movie kind of uh, eschews a lot of that extra stuff and just kind of focuses on like the three big set pieces of the of the novel and just kind of feels like we're just bopping around with johnny for a little while until he you know dies yeah like <laughs> When I looked at the um, the runtime, yeah. right during the uh, right before the the ice is going to break scene, yeah, where there's like 25 minutes left of the movie, y- yes. And I wrote down, I was like, I have no idea where this movie is going, what no. the climax is going to be. I have no clue. <laughs> Did you think for a minute it was just the kids? Well, I thought him saving the kids was going to be the big thing, and then nope. It seems that way. Yeah, no, Not no. We got to throw in a nuclear holocaust in the last uh, 15 minutes of the movie, and there's like no foreshadowing of that, right? I do like and that's that's another thing that that gets lost from the book is you really do get like Greg Stilson like working his way up through the the ranks he's like blackmailing politicians and torturing like teenagers to make himself seem like he's like actually a really helpful member of the community Mm -hmm. (laughs) he's like he's like oh I have a scared straight program and then you find out he's literally like humiliating children and like this awful human being so that by the time Johnny meets him you're like I want you to put a bullet in his head yeah and in this one he's just kind of like like a good old boy that will someday lose his mind. <laughs> yeah, and like there's just too many different things going on in this movie because at right. first you're like oh it's this guy with this gift and how is he going to use it is he going to use it for good is he just going to like hide away from the world right and then he's also dealing with being in a coma and losing his girl and that girl moving on right and then you know then it's like oh no now he's got to solve this serial killer murder yes okay so that's what the movie's going to be nope right. it's also about this politician that's corrupt and it's like what do we do what do we do <laughs> yeah it's really compact we're literally these are four seasons of tv it's really <laughs> compact and to the point where i'm like man i would love for someone to take because it's a, i think what it is at the end of the day is i like this movie because it's a story that i like mm-hmm. but i would love to see someone take a crack at this on hbo max like and just do like a mini series or something this would be a good mini series yeah yeah get the people that made the outsider to do this i'd be oh I'd watch yeah that. absolutely yeah the outsider was great i what do you think about the opening titles mm-hmm. like where you kind of get to know all the places and like the, the negative space fills I mean, the title honestly, card in yeah it honestly kind of just went right over my head i was like okay oh really oh i think it's so interesting i didn't think i didn't think much of it yeah again this is my first time seeing it so i had no idea what i was in for i did no research up ahead (laughs) so i just went in completely cold but then i was also confused his his abilities that he has sure right it's pretty obvious like i thought it would be a thing where like that's what the movie is going to be like him figuring out what this is yeah but he immediately is like hey your daughter is burning in this in their house your house is on fire you can still save her i'm like okay so he 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 gets it right away he's he's not just like i think he's in a he's in a trance mm -hmm. like that's that's kind of what i get from it is that he doesn't really know why he knows it he just does so he has to tell her but but the part that's confusing to me yeah is 10 minutes before the credits roll that he's meeting with the doc 
doctor and he's like not only can you see the future you can change it I'm right like, yeah no shit he's been doing that the entire movie <laughs> that's a weird thing that happens with this screenplay so in the book the dead zone refers to the part of his brain that has been damaged yes. and that he like he can't recall certain things like there's pit there's bits of his memory that are missing and also this part of his brain is like inactive so his mind has to find other avenues to function and that's what causes his abilities and he calls that his dead zone the, the part that he can't access i mean that would make it way more interesting if like he didn't remember right brooke adams and was slowly putting it back together in this movie their version of the dead zone is literally just like oh that's the part of the future you can change yeah. you know, like that that's not quite like you said, if we've already we're already on board with the idea that he can change the future. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like we've seen him save a little girl's life. And and then we get the the Hitler uh conundrum, the baby oh, yeah. Hitler thing, which I was like, wow, yeah. I can't believe a movie actually ever like did this yeah. 40 years ago. <laughs> and I love that I love that uh Herbert Lom just says like, yeah, I fucking kill him like, yeah. like straight <laughs> herbert Lom, by the way rules yeah, um he's he he's he's great he was in uh you know the pink panther movies mm -hmm. uh he was the phantom of the opera like the dude that. has a an imdb page like longer than my fucking arm mm -hmm. he just rules uh and he's i think he's really good as dr wyzak in this he's 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 not asked to do a whole lot and he does a whole lot with it <laughs> well you know it's, uh, it's something that i noticed that's going a lot in this movie yeah uh fucking bowl cuts because <laughs> <laughs> there are so yeah. many people with like even brooke adams has a bowl cut at one point i'm like what do we do Lincoln's I mean, <laughs> haircut at the beginning of the movie he oh. looks like elvis from quantum of solace <laughs> that was my first note i was like haha his haircut fucking nerd <laughs> that was my first <laughs> note of this movie followed by mm -hmm. my second note which was i didn't know seeing christopher walking on a roller coaster was something i needed to see yeah. but I'm glad that this movie showed me and I'm getting I, progressively more distressed by it. I, I I was like, this sequence could have gone on for another two minutes and I would not be disappointed. <laughs> I mean, even before that, one of my favorite things is that we first see Johnny reading The Raven to his class mm -hmm. and then he finishes reading it and he goes, pretty good, huh? Yeah. And I was like, there's no there's no lesson plan. You were just going to it's just story time with these high schoolers. Yeah, that's their cue to get up and leave. So he is that, that means he does that all the time. He's yeah. just like yeah how about that shit pretty good like, all right huh? i guess that's our cue to leave. hey this guy hamlet what do you think <laughs> pretty not so right and right. then everyone just gets up and leaves <laughs> this is also when we find out that johnny's been saving himself for marriage that okay that was weird i didn't know if that's what it was <laughs> or, think, yeah, yeah. to me well to me it read like he was being playing the log game like we talked about with michael Myers. he's like nah, girl if you want to get this walking dick you gotta walk that shit out lady you gotta wait well she she said like she invites him up but it, here's the thing i get i think i've talked about this before i get debilitating migraines mm -hmm. if someone stopped me in the rain to make out with them when i just told them i have a migraine mm -hmm. i would be like i'm going inside it's fucking cold <laughs> like, <laughs> leave me alone yeah and you do miss a, you miss a lot of their like their their relationship i mean we spend a, in the book you spend and I, I promise i won't do this whole like book versus movie thing no please because i need to know since they they show me nothing of their relationship you They're lose a lot of context yes. and i think maybe that's another reason why i like the movie is because i'm just adding in all of these things in the back of my head yeah because like i like you you lose so much of like the buildup of their relationship and the fact that they were planning to get married and like all this other stuff and it just i don't know and it, it there's a whole sequence where he does this like spinning a wheel of fortune to at the carnival mm -hmm. instead of the roller coaster and his headaches are getting worse but he's also winning the prize every time mm. so it shows that he has some semblance of you know the shining or whatever it is sure. that he's got sure. yeah and I, I do think you lose a lot of that what we do get though is a scene that i wish mally had gotten to see which is a fucking milk truck mm -hmm. I, I know <laughs> and milk all over the windshield is maybe the most cronenberg shot in the movie <laughs> he, the thing that's that's great about this this uh, car accident is <laughs> he's riding in the rain mm -hmm. the moat truck tips over and it's just gliding across the street it's very pet cemetery almost sure that. but then 
for some reason he's wipe he's got the windshield wipers on but he's also wiping the inside of the windshield sure. and i'm like that doesn't help you when it's raining dude <laughs> just <laughs> right. on, if anything that's gonna make it worse you're gonna have handprints all over and not see shit <laughs> maybe that's why he wrecked maybe he, his handprints yeah he's just yeah he can't he's like oh no it's just my fingerprints mm -hmm. um yeah and i i i do i love that you know as he's waking up the they make the choice not to put like a five years later chiron on the screen like yeah. you find out as he does i think that's a really interesting choice that's smart and i like that he's just like wow there's not a scratch on me like he doesn't know about the coma he thinks that he was just very lucky mm -hmm. and then the rug gets pulled out from under him when he finds out sarah remarried and he just kind of or married and he just kind of rolls over like yeah. he want you can tell that he wants to leave but he literally can't stand up and yeah, I, I just that's good there's some the the stuff that works in this movie really well i think is like the unspoken things like that oh that works and i think this first sequence of him with his gift actually is really good because like seeing him in the bed drenched in sweat that's on fire that's yeah he's on fire in the bed and then yeah he sees the little girl and if this poor nurse has the same haircut he did at the beginning of the movie <laughs> that's, she sure does but she sure does the best part about this this scene sequence mm -hmm. is the fucking fishbowl the fishbowl bubbling exploding yes <laughs> wild I, I was like what the fuck and you know, they had to i think i read that they had to rebuild the set because they, they, they fucked up the first shot so they had to like do the same thing i read because originally they had a stuffed animal of et in there and universal was like uh-uh oh really <laughs> yeah that's what i read that's hilarious <laughs> yeah so walken had to be set on fire twice mm -hmm. and that, well that's what they said too is like you think that sweat on his forehead that's just the flame retardant material and it just looked like sweat oh sure but it looks good yeah. like it, that sequence plays great and then I don't, him shouting at this woman hurry up yeah <laughs> you don't you can still save her yeah that was good and tense but also i just kept crack cackling yes because that poor fish explodes erupted. It, it was... <laughs> yeah yeah there's some really great stuff with the visions in the first half of the movie mm -hmm. like the production value of wyzak's world war ii flashback it's good is insane yeah like it cuts to you know the 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 ghetto being bombed out and tanks and like all this shit like it's it's kind of insane that they went that far with it oh i know when that popped up i was like this is not for this movie is it like <laughs> <laughs> right they had this leftover from something else I, I also uh like that there's zero explanation as to how he got his ability like he just gets in a car wreck and then boom psychic i <laughs> i like that too i like that there's just it's just like oh something's happened to your brain where you're you're using a different part of it now oh like like a, a, a newer movie would have spent like 20 minutes of him yes. being like what is this and like, Robert De Niro would have given him a pill. <laughs> yeah, he would have went to a library and you would see him doing that thing where they go through old newspaper things on the computer. Sure, yeah. the microfiche. Yep, yeah. Or he, or he would, uh, he'd pull a Peter Parker and just type in on Bing, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. <laughs> psychic visions. Uh-huh. I love that there, I also like that there's nothing good about his visions. Like yeah. they hurt him and they terrify him. Nobody's winning the lottery no. or, you know. <laughs> yeah, and there's uh, like Cronenberg would fire a cap gun like yep. pointed at his face like so that he would get those real like those realistic flinches yeah and i there's a there's an incredible snl sketch uh from the 80s like shortly after this movie came out where he would um uh, he could only get visions for like bullshit mm -hmm. like he would like shake he'd shake his someone's hand he's like you left your shoes the ones you like you know it's yeah. just like <laughs> like small things like oh your keys are back at the office you think uh you think M. Night saw this movie before he made Unbreakable? Oh. It's almost guaranteed, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there's no way he... Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I remember when I saw Unbreakable for the first time, like, being like, oh, I'm getting real Dead Zone vibe. I mm -hmm. felt like that guy who's like, the only movie I've seen is Boss Baby, where I'm like, I'm getting some real Boss Baby vibes from this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, there's no way that he didn't. Uh -huh. It's it's interesting, the, the first sequence between him and sarah mm -hmm. i think he plays that confusion really well like it's been like two days for him and five years for her mm -hmm. and I, I think the the uncomfortableness is is really interesting i think sarah might be the worst person really uh and i can't i don't know it's so difficult i think she's so she she wants things to be 
Like there, there's a, there's a longing there that I think is really interesting. I just I feel so. Oh, you mean because she's married and has a kid and she's still she's still well, she sleeps with him yeah. and is just like, I wanted to have one more day with you like this. And I was like, but that's it's easy for you to say that after five years. Yeah. As far as he's concerned, he was with you yesterday. You know what I mean? That's a good point. I was going to say it's almost kind of romantic that of that idea of like one more night or something. But oh, it is. No, it I it's a, it is. It is. But it's. It's it's also just like all all I can all I keep thinking about is just like how much that fucking sucks for Johnny. Like yes. to just because every time he sees her, it breaks his heart because mm-hmm. he was he was literally just engaged to her. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, when when he sees her towards the end and gets introduced to the husband uh, and then he, he just hugs that kid, Chris. I'm like, you don't even, this isn't even your kid. That this is a kid. very weird scene. Well, and that kid, that kid is so emotionally mature. Uh-huh. It's so strange because he, he comes in and he's like, Johnny, why are you crying? He yes. also has like a very like he has a man voice. Like, oh, yeah. He's like, very... Johnny, let me tell you about my father. Johnny. He's the one that's detached. Like when his Johnny. when he's telling him about the ice is gonna break and he looks at his dad, he goes, Dad, I'm scared. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this crazy man just broke a, a glass vase with his cane right. and he's telling me the ice is gonna break. And I like the thing is, like, I I think the thing that's so difficult about it is that there are so many actual realistic emotions at play here. Like mm-hmm. he is the one who got away for her and for him it's just like everything's been stolen from him immediately yeah and i i think that it's played really well because i from the start he just wants people to leave him alone yeah you know they still love each other in different ways the 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 shot of her sobbing in the car when she leaves the clinic mm-hmm. and there's no sound like it's just her pulling out i think that's done really well i think the first act of this movie is so strong and then afterwards it's really good in like fits and starts you know what i mean yeah i agree with that i would like to have known if the uh the milk truck driver was okay oh sure <laughs> never get any word about him <laughs> with johnny that was johnny's like when he learned to shoot that's who he went after first that's the first guy yeah then we we get the physical therapy scene of him trying to to walk on his crutches yeah. and this this PT guy my <laughs> yeah he has the line, I'd like to see you do some serious chugging. And I was like, hell yeah, my dude. Let's crack over the cold <laughs> one, buddy. <laughs> That's great. That would have been great if they just did a cut to and it was just... Dos Equis, dead zone. <laughs> shotgunning a beer. Yeah, and I, I love that. I love the um, the press conference where the guy's like, do you know, am I going to die? And he goes, we're all going to die. Like, yeah. He's just like over it already. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was good. I, there's some really cool, there's some really great stuff in here. I love that he scares the shit out of that journalist. Oh, uh, I love it too yeah but then he kills his mom (laughs) yeah i was gonna say this actress uh, this poor lady i know cannot cannot act to save her life i know the stroke i know she's trying to have i thought she was choking on something (laughs) she's trying to have she's trying to have she probably did have a stroke she's doing her best she is doing her best yes absolutely no it's always (laughs) it always makes me feel bad when i see like an older actor that i'm just like oh you're not you're in a different movie. Well, for me, it's when I see an older actress like that in a movie that's this old. It's kind of like when I see animals in movies <laughs> that are like 10 years old. I'm uh-huh. like, oh, you're not with us anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> like Priscilla, I, Priscilla gets so angry with me when we're watching a movie from like the 80s or 90s. And there's like a dog. And I'm like, oh, that dog's long dead. <laughs> you're like every every dog in <laughs> Dr. Doolittle is dead now. Oh, the, all the animals. Even the Eddie Murphy one, all the animals are dead. They're all dead. Even Eddie Murphy. Is- yeah, Eddie Murphy, he's dead. Rest yeah. in peace, Eddie Murphy and Donald Pleasance. <laughs> <laughs> and oatmeal and all the animals that were a part of those movies. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> So I guess this is when we get to Castle Rock, right? The the when Sheriff Bannerman shows up. Yeah, I gotta have a Castle Rock reference. Yeah, this was the uh, the Dead Zone was the first uh, Castle Rock story, mm-hmm. and uh, to the point where like a couple of the you know the books and the movies actually refer to the events of the Dead Zone. There's actually a there's an uh, in the book version of Cujo. There is a uh, implication oh, that I know Cujo this story. Yeah. might be possessed by Frank Dodd, yep. <laughs> the 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 killer. Yep. But I I love this sequence. I love Bannerman, uh, played by Tom Skerritt, just being charming as fuck. Mm-hmm. Uh, he kind of guilts Johnny into helping. You know, yep. Johnny just wants to be left alone. But he's not as much of a he's not pressuring him like almost everyone else does in this movie. No, he's like, man, it'd be sure be nice if somebody with a psychic ability could help us out over here. 
here. <laughs> that really is. Yeah, because everyone else is just like, you owe us this. Yeah. And he's just like, I I'm so tired of failing that mm-hmm. I'm trying whatever I can. Yeah, this this murder mystery is not very interesting to me. No, and it takes up like a third of the novel and yep. it's maybe five minutes. In the film. <laughs> it's just he catches him the first time he decides to help. Yeah. And the <laughs> guy, Dodd doesn't even say, no, it wasn't me. He just immediately puts a, some scissors in his mouth. He deep throws some scissors. I, yeah. <laughs> Death by deep throating. I, I love that there is uh, there's little details in these scenes, though, with Johnny living at his dad's house. Like the house is a mess mm-hmm. because mom isn't cleaning mm-hmm. and two men are grieving and i there, there's these little like little touches like that that i think are interesting when when sarah comes to visit for christmas johnny puts his cane away because he wants her to see him like as as a whole man yep. a whole person you know yep. it's little things like that where that, that make me like like this movie more um and then they consummate their relationship while denny's in the next room yeah i I mean, does that mean that the grand, the dad, the grandpa was watching Denny while his his mom was slamming? <laughs> I hope so. No, he was he was like he's like she's out he's out right now, so they just put him down for a nap, yeah. had sex in the living room, and she you know she puts him in the car, they kiss. You know, Denny's gonna be in th- therapy years later. It's uh-huh. like my first memory is mommy kissing the guy who tried to kill Greg Stilson. I know who used me as a human shield. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, I got so much to say about that too when we get there. Can't but... wait. Can't wait. So we have this whole like almost like a reunion of the the two and like and I think this stuff's pretty well done like there's there's a there's a there's a sweetness to it but again like the whole all i can think about is just like this isn't this is not fair to johnny (laughs) like no but he he is he has no real moment to like grieve his mom dying right i don't don't think there's even a scene of him finding out is there not really i mean she she dies it cuts to like him and his dad living together basically we get introduced to martin sheen right with uh this guy that comes to visit and he's like hey come help out my son right and then we get introduced to like him in in the guy's house oh you you skipped over the the whole murder i did i I had literally had no other notes to go (laughs) oh why there's a couple of things that i i like in this sequence yeah no no please please because i i i was watching and i was like yeah that's pretty straightforward yeah anyway martin sheen's here (laughs) (laughs) i do like the bit of johnny like sitting up and he's in the gazebo during the daytime and and that whole sequence i love him finding out that the mother knew about it oh yeah oh i guess i do have something to say when they're at the gazebo yes and he he finally puts together that it was one of the police officers it's dodd he just keeps shouting i watched it and i did nothing i'm like dude you got a phrasing with the way you're talking to this police officers they're gonna think you're an accomplice (laughs) Mm, they're gonna they're gonna shoot you yeah Yeah. (laughs) i did nothing yeah (laughs) i did not i did not hit her it's bullshit see See? shit you're right yeah (laughs) and he's like why are you so hysterical johnny (laughs) yeah and i I do i like the touch that dodd's room is like a kid's room it's covered in dust there's just toys everywhere uh, and that's the that's got to be the least like easy way to 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 kill yourself. Right. Like, oh, yeah. You you could have done. I mean, that seems like the most violent way. I mean, ugh. slitting your wrist or throat would have been a lot cleaner and quicker than deep throating a pair of oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. But yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And the, around the But you're right. It is. It's weird for the fact that there is like a, you know, a, a murderer and a rapist who is like apprehended in the middle of this movie. It really does feel like a third. Act. <laughs> yeah and it's strange because when i think of this movie that's the stuff i always think about but mm-hmm. it's barely in the film well i do have to say uh frank dodd that's his name yeah dodd yeah dodd dodd yeah i i do like that dodd it's dodd the the, the t- tom scared it's like well hey where's dodd and he's like and the other guy's like oh he left <laughs> he took off <laughs> that's not suspicious at all he no he 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 says he took your cruiser yeah, like, he, took, <laughs> he took bannerman's what an car asshole. And, <laughs> <laughs> but also i do have to say i do respect him because he does kill himself the same way he was killing his uh his victims so you gotta respect live by the scissors die by the scissors he's got a through line yeah (laughs) if nothing else he's consistent absolutely so i mean do we ever get a motive why he murdered women no not really no and in the in the move in the book i if i recall correctly there was some implications that he was like abused and like he would that was his way of like acting out or something or abused by his mom is yeah. this, are we going back to this well again Stephen King? i think so oh. yeah i th- if i recall correctly it's been years since i've read it does but... this movie take place in maine yes no, of, of course. course it does yeah all right just checking uh and yeah you're right like this is when greg stilson starts to creep into the story there's a big poster and 
uh yeah he's visiting the dad that wants the wants johnny to tutor his son Mm -hmm. and you know he's on he's on he's a good old boy he's doing push-ups on stage to show how he can stay in shape oh god a hundred push-ups yeah didn't this feel too relevant (laughs) Yeah. yeah yeah well Two things about it. One, he, when he's talking with uh, the dad and the, and Sonny and the other people that are in there. Sure. And he says the phrase, what the hell is happening to this country? And I'm like, that's a phrase I'd really like to go the rest of my life without hearing again. No kidding. Because that seems to be every year I have to hear that. <laughs> every election year that's coming up, I have to hear that. He said he does he does 100 push-ups while the crowd is chanting, you know, counting with him. Mm-hmm. And then he says it shows how he could stay in shape, better shape than the country. And then he jokes about the... Uh, these jokes mm-hmm. is the kind of shit that you would see that you would see Donald Trump making at a rally mm-hmm. where he's he's like at 2 p.m. Are, are y'all all unemployed? That, well, OK, yes, I was going to say, because if I was in this crowd, I'd be so fucking offended. This dude not only calls me out for being unemployed, but then says, I've got a job for you. And I'm like, oh, cool. He's bringing jobs to the town. And then he asks you to be a volunteer for his campaign. Yep. I would be like, get fucked. <laughs> yeah. And in the book, <laughs> he, he was using like a biker gang as his like security detail. Of course. So like people were getting people were getting hurt and trampled at his rallies. Well, because bikers ruin everything, as we found out in Dawn of the Day. <laughs> right. Yeah. They were always having cream pie fights. Um, yep. Stinky cream and, pie. And it is. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And then it, it, like the. Yeah. The. The, the dad just goes like can't they see through this guy yeah. like what the fuck um oh, and when it felt he, too when real we first get intro- yeah when we first get introduced to him he's Roger, like that's his name. oh yeah yeah when, he, when he's talking to him he's, he's like oh my opponent went down and literally handed out cash to these people in need uh-huh. i'm like yeah that's the stimulus this yeah. is yeah if people they worked yeah <laughs> Uh, and then he tries to take credit for it. He's like, you can spend it how you want, but vote for me because I'm going to be the one that helps you. That's right. With my trickle down economics. <laughs> yeah. And then he just starts throwing uh, paper towels into the audience. Yeah. Just just yeah, just just free throwing it. Ugh. <laughs> well, then we get this thing that like and I've mentioned this a bunch of times on this show and on Oh, that's a scary movie. But I'm a sucker for any scene that has heavy handed uh, a classroom reading or a lesson plan that is mm-hmm. heavy handed symbolism for the movie mm-hmm. where he's reading, you know, about uh, reading Edgar Allan Poe and I and walking legit is just like skip skip to the you know the sad part the part where he'll never see her again yeah. like you know it's just <laughs> it's like we gotta we gotta skip to the part that's relevant to the me the protagonist yep I don't know this Chris character doesn't do any like this whole section of the movie is for not, nothing like nothing comes of this it's very slow too like the, all the stuff of them getting to know each other and him being quiet and like writing in his room it's so slow like this is the beginning of a movie and yes. yet we're like 30 minutes away from the end sure I and mean, again if this was the beginning of an episode of the dead zone on hbo max like yeah. it would make sense yeah i do love the quiet tension between like when walt and sarah show up at the door mm-hmm. and you know you get the implication that walt is just like a little threatened a little bit yeah and also again why the fuck isn't mally here we see a bunch of kids fall through the ice yep a lot of kid death a yeah implied kid death and then two actual kid death for sure yeah so <laughs> we the part that i do like though is i'm jumping back a little bit but when uh-huh. when christopher walken meets martin sheen for the first time sure and you think he's gonna get to touch his hand to see everything and he has mm-hmm. the button in his hand it's like oh that's a nice little he like smacks it in there yeah. yeah he's like he's expecting to touch this guy's hand and then when we actually see because you know politicians what do they do they shake hands yeah and him being in the crowd shaking his hands and martin sheen being like oh, okay and then taking a, a second glance and being like oh shit it's this dude <laughs> right so here's here's the thing. So we get this premonition that Martin Sheen's in a bathrobe <laughs> and he launches the nuclear missiles at who? Who is he launching news? To? Somebody. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. We this never gets really laid out. We just know he like for all we know, he's launching nuclear missiles at someone who truly like <laughs> I mean, I don't want to say deserves it, but right. like an enemy that's that's really done something like we do get a bit where the other senators are allowed to run in and they're like, we have a diplomatic solution mm-hmm. or the vice president runs it. And he's just he just tells them like, nope, I already took. So the in the book, there is you don't actually see the, the the what he sees isn't quite so literal. Yeah, it, it's more that he's just like I he, he writes a letter to his dad that's like I saw a vision that 
uh, he was going to exacerbate, you know, problems in, with the Middle East and was going to cause a nuclear war. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not like it's not quite you don't quite see him just be like, fuck, yeah, let's do it. You know, <laughs> rock and roll. He's like Dr. Strangelove riding the bomb all the way to <laughs> yeah, home. <woo-hoo>. Like. <laughs> yeah, and he does. He says he says, gentlemen, the missiles are flying. Yep. Hallelujah. Yep. Um, this is when he purees the scenery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and it is it is uh, it, this is when the movie immediately is just like we have got to fucking wrap it up. We can. Mm-hmm. Kill Hitler uh, uh, conversation. Mm-hmm. We get the letter to Sarah where he explains, I know what I'm doing. I'm not crazy. And he, I guess, I guess we're, at, wow, we're at the ending. Huh? I know. That's how I felt watching this movie. I was like, wait, that's all? <laughs> <laughs> this might, I mean, after, after our Halloween episode, it, you know, any episode that uh, is under the, you know, two and a half hour mark is uh, pretty interesting. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a win for me if it's under two hours for sure. Sure. That's a good day for me. <laughs> oh, it's, it's great. Well, I mean, there's a lot of the other stuff I could talk about towards this ending, though. Yeah. But, like, it would have been much more interesting if there would have been, I don't know, a two-minute scene mm-hmm. of, like, Christopher Walken using a rifle. Yeah. Or maybe he, he he's doing, like, a target practice. Because this is, like, the opposite of Chekhov's gun. He got, he literally pulls this rifle out from, from behind the dresser. And he he's has. like, oh, I yeah. got my rifle. <laughs> like, I was like, that was at no point referenced in the movie. <laughs> in the book, he goes to, uh, he takes the bus, and then he goes to this... Uh, uh, ammunition store and buys a rifle and the guy there's a bit where the guy behind the counter doesn't believe that like he's like he's like oh sure your name's john smith i know and he, like accepts he lets him buy it anyway because yeah. he's just like fuck it i need to make some money yeah uh again very realistic uh-huh. and and you know in a book that came out in the late 70s early 80s so johnny takes his gun to the rally uh sees sarah on the stage sarah yells johnny and he immediately like freezes so greg's guy uh uh what's his name uh sunny shoots johnny i love the shot of the light fixture exploding behind him when he's shot Mm -hmm. i think that's really well done oh i guess we should we should kind of explain a little bit so we get Christopher Walken's in the crowd yeah. uh, at the at the rally for Greg Stilson. He shakes his hand. He sees his vision that he's going to become president one day. Right. And he's going to go fucking mental and launch nuclear missiles that end the world. Somebody. Yeah. yeah. Start a nuclear holocaust. Uh, and so he decides, you know what? He calls his doctor up and he's like, look, I've seen this vision. And he also explains to him, my headaches are getting worse. I don't want to take any medicine. I know it's terminal. If you had time, you know, if you had one chance to fix everything, would you go back? and kill hitler yeah he's like if you knew hitler was going to do everything he was going to do would you go back and kill him and the doctor's like yeah i would and he he says i've swore i'm a doctor i've sworn an oath to protect human life so i would have no choice of course i'd kill the son of a bitch <laughs> like, yeah that's a great line so he, then he's like all right i know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna get my gun that i've clearly had this whole movie have in the corner of the room uh-huh. yeah that you've all seen yeah uh, i'm gonna get on the. I, he dismantles it gets on the bus and like wears a blanket over him so nobody sees it right uh he goes to like this banquet hall that he knows Greg Stilson's gonna have a rally at. Yeah. And he sleeps in there overnight. He breaks in, sleeps in the balcony overnight. Yeah. And then while he's actually um, you know, all the, the people start coming in and then Greg gets on stage. Johnny rises up with the rifle. Yeah. And he doesn't know that uh, Brooke Adams and her husband and the baby are there. Right. She sees him, shouts out Johnny. Johnny. He freezes. Greg immediately goes for the baby to use as a human shield. So Johnny takes one shot, misses. Greg says, give me him. Mm -hmm. Grabs the baby and holds it in front of his face Uh while cameras are snapping everywhere. Uh Uh-huh. Sonny squeezes off two shots. Johnny falls over the balcony and like taking the american flag down with them yep and and he's dead he's well so then stilson runs over and says who the hell sent you johnny grabs his hand sees a vision of craig stilson shooting himself in the head Mm -hmm. because his political career is over because he used a baby as a human shield yes it's it's on the cover of newsweek (laughs) yes so the reveal is there's a magazine with a gun on it yeah and then you see a hand take the gun off the magazine and it's a picture of greg Holding up a baby as a human shield. And it says, like, Stilson's over or yeah. something like that. And he puts a gun under his chin and uh, pulls the trigger. So he, <laughs> Walken gets this kind of smile on his face like, yeah, I did it. He says, you're finished. You're finished. Sarah <laughs> runs over, holds him. 
and he tells her good she asks him why he tells her goodbye uh she says i love you and he dies in her arms smashed to credits so so, so a couple things yeah. about this ending right one it is very convenient and i do like it but it is convenient it's like oh thank god everything went according to plan somewhat like R- sort of yeah like he was i mean i think it would have been better if like instead of the letter and everything there was a little bit more to like johnny going knowing he's probably going to die going into this yeah. like having a scene with his dad you know maybe going to see his mom's grave or something i know and that's that's stuff you get in the book um, you know sadly that we lose well then there's there's a bit of an epilogue too in in the book that i i love and i wish was in the movie as much as i love the you know the mentality of okay story's over let's get the fuck out of here <laughs> there is this really beautiful scene in the in the novel where sarah goes to visit johnny's grave and she doesn't understand why like there's a bit where she like starts crying and screaming like it's not fair none of this makes any sense Mm -hmm. and she feels his spirit touch her shoulder and then she suddenly just like stops crying realizes that everything's okay and drives home and that's like the how the book ends. And I love that moment so much. Before she drives home, Carrie White's hand bursts out of the grave and grabs <laughs> hers. <laughs> right, right. I mean, I'm fine without having an epilogue. Yeah. I just, the other thing about this ending is I'm, I, tr- I just imagine it from Walt's point of view. Yeah. He's on stage. This random, this, this guy he's seen one time yeah. pops up from the balcony, tries to shoot the guy he's campaigning for. Yeah. That guy then takes his baby and... I mean, Christopher Walken almost tries to shoot him while the baby is. <laughs> he thinks about it. He sure thinks about it. And then I much watch like a movie my... that we just watched this week. Yes. And then I watch I watch my wife and the mother of my child run over to this man that almost got us murdered and right. tells him, I, I love, love you. you. But at least she whispers <laughs> it. I'm just like, poor Walt. Poor Walt. <laughs> Walt might be the most mistreated guy in the movie. Uh, it's worse. It's worse in the TV show because he's raising a kid that is actually like in the in the TV show. She had Johnny's baby while he was in that a makes coma. Sense. Yeah. And, and Walt doesn't know about it. I, that makes sense. And I guess we should probably say scan for the movie. It's got to be Greg, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. One thousand percent. Yeah. I can't think of anybody more scampy than him. No. And yeah, smash the credits. We get the fuck out of there. It's a very John Carpenter <laughs> ending. I feel yeah. like like John Carpenter's whole mentality is just like, oh, fuck it. I'm done telling the story. Yeah. Why should anything good happen? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, there is good that comes out of this, sure. which I guess we'll talk about. But sure. yeah, Johnny is fucking dead. Like his life almost seeming seemingly meant nothing other yeah. than protecting the world from nuclear holocaust. Like he has no God forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the room parallels are everywhere. In right? This. They're they're all over the place. All right. Well, is there anything else we want to talk about before we get into like all the the nice uh, niceties at the end here, the prop cops and all that? Uh, I think I think I've gone through all my notes. The ice is going to break. Yeah, this is surprisingly a short episode, but well, it's also just two of us. Yeah, I, I, but I don't know. I don't know if Mally would have had much input. Honestly, I feel like he's he's probably exhausted from the <laughs> the strike. Oh, absolutely. He's had a hell of a week. Almost showing up and all that. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, that's OK, because I could use a break from editing episodes. So right. I'm OK with a shorter episode. But I, I, I don't I hope I didn't uh, damper how you how you feel about this movie, because I, I didn't enjoy it. No, like I like I said, it's one that I, I totally see like the issues with. I really like this story. Mm-hmm. I would love to see. And but it's one of those where I'm like, I would love to see someone take this and do do something new with it. Well, we're, we're deep in Stephen King's. We're renaissance so maybe yeah. you'll get that it's kind of surprising that no one's done it so far yeah i would not be surprised if hbo did a miniseries or something so yeah but also like there's some good stuff in this movie i just i don't know we all have those movies that like we know are quote unquote, <laughs> not great but yeah. we still are d- defensive of. oh i see the holes in it for sure yeah. and i it's it's not it's not one of cronenberg's finest it's not one of the best king adaptations but like the stuff that works for in this movie really works for me. And like mm-hmm. I said, I think that there is a lot of me going in, loving the book and just kind of painting those extra scenes in my head in between. Sure. Because it, it really does feel it plays like a greatest hits compilation of the book. Got it. Yeah. I mean, that's me with with Resident Evil. I know yeah, it's not a good movie. Sure. I'm, I can see that, but I'm, I still like it. Right. I get <laughs> so it. I still have fun with it. I feel the same way. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about Prop Cop. 
So for new listeners, this is where we look at all of the props that are in the movie The Dead Zone from 1983, and we decide which one we want to take for ourselves. Yeah. Nathan, I'll let you go first since this is your pick. What are you taking from uh, The Dead Zone? I want that Newsweek covered in blood with the picture of <laughs> Stilson holding the baby. Yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. Man, I thought I had a lock on mine early on when I was like, I want Christopher Walken's walk-in cane. Oh, sure. Then I could say I have a walk-in cane. <laughs> but nice. Then I saw the vision of the nuclear holocaust. I'm like, that old school 80s hand scanner, like biometric scanner. I was like, that's... Oh, sure. With the big red button. I was like, that's incredible. Yeah. I need that in my life. It was pretty great. <laughs> and he says, he says, put, you know, put your goddamn hand on that thing or I will hack it off. And, put, and apparently it was in the original screenplay, he did do that. Like, he, he chopped the guy's hand off and oh yeah he, he shoots the guy dead and then uses his hand to get it on that's there. right yeah well this one is going to be an interesting one uh -huh. what about bit part yeah so this is where we replace a featured extra or just somebody a small unnamed role in the movie with ourselves mm -hmm. so we can add it to our filmography so nathan who is going to be your bit part i cheated a little bit because he is named in the movie but okay. sunny uh greg stilson's like right hand man but oh, yeah. i only want to play him in the vision <laughs> so he's he's wearing like a leather jacket the whole movie but mm -hmm. in the in the vision this is the first time i've noticed he's dressed like an old timey butler mm -hmm. and i don't know why he's got like <laughs> tails and like a tie and shit it's a fucking great look that's okay you know what? it's like greg stilson's a uh, bond villain and that's the henchman that's right i mean th yeah. this is an am amalgam amazing of every other movie we've ever done it <laughs> you know what would have been better is if the vision that that johnny sees would have been like like we see like terminator 2 level destruction like right. that would have made it way more impactful if i recall correctly the original in the in the usa series when he touches stilson's hand he sees like a nuclear missile hit the white house but oh, I, okay. I might be re misremembering that i feel like they did have like an early 2000 cgi like nuclear explosion they just lifted it from uh independence day or something <laughs> right <laughs> well that's I, I just wish it was less vague like yeah he's just launching nuclear missiles missiles we have no idea what the context of anything is right like i don't know it that scene should have been where all the money went to let's make this shit like really feel impactful right so the ending mix hit you harder but i don't know I decided I want to be the guy that gets to call Christopher Walken a freak during that demonstration of his powers at the clinic. Oh, sure. Yeah. That apparently had a, a sister commit suicide. And he's like, you want to know why? And he has the most <laughs> shit eating grin the whole time. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's great. He's he's smiling like the bully. He calls him a fucking freak on live TV. That's right. <laughs> he reminds me of the bully in Napoleon Dynamite. The mm -hmm. one who's like, just like during the uh, the sign language pit. Mm -hmm. Well, let's uh, let's do our job. Sure. Let's try to find the silver lining of the dead zone. So what you got? Uh, Johnny saved the world. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty open and shut right there, right? Yeah. <laughs> I actually wrote down a couple because yeah. I, I had a feeling. That, I did too, actually. <laughs> I had a feeling that was going to be the big one. And yeah. since Miley's not here, I feel like obligated to also put in, put in one for him. Sure. But Denny's okay. Yeah. Like he didn't get shot down. <laughs> a baby didn't get murdered in front of our eyes. Right. And speaking of kids surviving, uh, Chris survived ice breaking. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And he, the dad wanted him to go. And then I like that the dad is just like comatose after that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good scene. Uh, and I also Johnny weirdly got closure with his relationship with uh, Sarah. Yeah. And Greg also got what was coming to him. Yeah. So, And lastly, the photographer that took that photo of Greg holding up the baby as a shield probably had a stellar career after that. He got paid very well. Very. Yeah. That dude won a Pulitzer Prize probably just for that photo. You're you're the photographer who ruined Greg Stilson. Yeah. I, yeah, I love that. <laughs> so yeah, I, this one was open shut for me. This was just good because I, I needed uh, something, you know, easy-ish to do. <laughs> because right. uh, the last couple have been kind of difficult so i'm glad this one was like open and shut yeah so all right well let's say that for some reason uh our silver linings didn't do it for you and you're like guys i'm still upset christopher walken's dead uh no have no fear <laughs> we're here to help with that as well yeah we're gonna offer you a double feature or the pick me up movie alternative as it's also known mm -hmm. so this is um where you pair the dead zone with another film and you watch both of them back to back so the secondary one will uh br bring you back up even things out yep. make you not so dour so uh what do you got for me nathan if you weren't crazy about this one you want something with a little more action but also uh involves peaks into the future 2000s sevens next starring oh nicholas cage and jessica beale still have not finished it which is 
fully one of the worst movies I've ever seen. <laughs> it's yeah, I got halfway through it and, and rage quit, but I know I need to watch it. I know. No, I well, I keep threatening to put it on the schedule someday <laughs> and it almost made it into this season. I will tell you that. All right. All right. Well, I put on another Christopher Walken movie. Oh. One of my favorite Christopher Walken movies. Uh-huh. If you think, you know, Christopher Walken's just too good of a guy in this movie, I want to see what it would be like if he was like the Greg Stilson <laughs> of a movie. Oh, sure. Look no further than his performance as uh, one Maximilian Shrek uh, from Batman Returns. Yes. So you can see what, what would happen if Johnny got went evil went down the wrong path and also for that being a move a batman film where christopher walken says the phrase unlimited poontang Mm -hmm. (laughs) or or my favorite quote which is why are you dressed as batman oh my god (laughs) because he is batman (laughs) was batman yeah fucking great so good also one of the best deaths in a in a batman movie ever incredible death yeah and i love that the actor who plays his kid in that movie is doing an impression of christopher walken yes, to yes. his face dad save yourself dad go <laughs> <laughs> fucking love it yeah that that had to have been like that guy be like i got something that's gonna blow people away <laughs> you know who that is Mm-mm. that's andrew brunarski who played leatherface in the platinum dunes texas chainsaw remake oh no really <laughs> yeah that dude seemed like a hulk of a man in the leather in as leatherface I know. I did not, wow yeah okay beefed up i guess right on that's also a great movie too i will Hell stand yeah. by it no i agree i totally agree well i think this goes without question but i'm gonna ask anyway <laughs> do you nathan recommend the dead zone I think it's worth a watch. Okay. I think that uh, especially if you if you like if you've read the book and you haven't seen the film, give it a shot. Okay. I think that there's some really interesting choices from walking in the movie, and there are some moments that uh, transcend a a kind of clunky script. Mm. Okay. How about you? <laughs> nope yeah no that's fair <laughs> that's totally fair i just think it's 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 you didn't get a lot out of it that's fine no it's it's just too slow sure. for me there's nothing of real substance and walking doesn't really get to walk in that much like no. he's, he's very subdued that's one of the things i like about it i like i like the quieter walking okay i get that it's like a it's like a brisk walking <laughs> sure i guess i'm a walk in the park <laughs> i knew it was coming I guess my experience with Christopher Walken was, you know, early 2000s Walken to mid 2000s. Of like course. Joe Dirt, Seven Psychopaths, <laughs> uh, like all those. God, like he's so dialed in on Seven Psychopaths. Mm-hmm. So that, that movie is is a cartoon Walken performance that is like pointed in a way. Mm-hmm. Like the bit where he they, they're, you know, like we should call, you know, we should call the cops. And he goes, fuck the cops. Mm-hmm. Fuck them. Like mm-hmm. he's, <laughs> it's so good in that movie. Or when the guy threatens to shoot him, he's like, do it. Do it. He's like, what? He's like, I don't care. <laughs> I've got a, I have a shotgun pointed at your face. So what? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking love it. Yeah. But, and then I went back later and saw it's more dramatic stuff like the deer hunter and all sure. that good stuff. And again, I don't think he's maybe bad actor is not the right word. Maybe just, he, he n- picks interesting roles and interesting yeah. projects. And I don't know if they always pan out. Have you seen the prophecy? I've not seen any of the prophecies. Okay. The first one is interesting. It's not good, okay. but he's doing very interesting things in it where he's really <laughs> leaning into goofy walking mm-hmm. but he's scary while he does it all right i mean again uh, maybe i'm just i haven't given a, f- a fair share because all the movies i've seen i'm like mm. well you're talking about when you're talking about prime like 2000s walking you're also that's lumping in stuff like envy and balls of fury and yep. shit like that yep the fat boy slim music video right <laughs> uh yeah well the the great one of the greatest music videos of all time <laughs> Well, um, well, listener, if you think I'm fucking wrong and you think The Dead Zone is one of the best movies ever, <laughs> you can send your feedback in to us uh, at the Silver Lungs playlist at gmail.com or you can DM us on Instagram, Facebook or Twitter mm-hmm. uh, with your thoughts on the movie. Uh, we would love to hear from you. Uh, and if you haven't already, you can follow us uh, on all of those platforms and uh, get some more information from us over on uh, reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. And of course, the usual podcast roundup. Please subscribe, rate, and leave feedback if you haven't already. New episodes every Monday. We're almost, uh, I think by this point, we're three-fourths of the way through the season. We're, we're getting towards the end here. But there's still plenty of good movies to come. And some bad ones, too, we'll probably be talking about. <laughs> but yeah, the best thing you can do for our show is just tell other people about it. Let your friends and family know. Get the word out. We would really appreciate that. 
Well, all right. Is there anything we forgot to talk about with the dead zone? Uh, no. Okay. I'm sure if I could, if I could touch your hand right now, I'd, mm-hmm. I'd find something we forgot. Oh, I'm sure if you touch my hand, you would also get a clue for a future episode. Oh. Maybe even next week's episode. Hmm. Mm. Oh, wait. Wrong music cue. <laughs> <laughs> the soundboard is going to break. Yeah. <laughs> So I have a clue for the movie we're talking about next week, and I think you will enjoy it. Because a lot of times in horror movies, you have the internal question that I think the audience is also having as well. And that question is... Should I stay or should I go? So (laughs) it's a question that will definitely come up a lot in next week's episode and by the way we are not doing stranger things and that song is not featured at all throughout the movie it's great i knew i was in for something because i saw you just had a, a sound file on your desktop that said clue uh yeah so uh we'll find out if uh said characters should stay or should they go next week <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> Me too, man. And we didn't mention, I, I, this is kind of a spooky lining. Oh, yeah. A little bit. Next week, for sure, we're continuing on. Like, it, we're this is like uh, we're getting off the off ramp to refuel. Yep. And next week, we're going right back to spooky town. Yeah, so. we, we pulled over in Maine. <laughs> <laughs> we made a, a quick detour in, in Maine. <laughs> And next next week we're gonna be on the other side of the coast. <laughs> yeah, we took a de- that's right. We took a detour on the other side of the country. Yeah, we took a detour to Maine. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, I I am I was stoked that I finally got to see this because mm-hmm. I can now say I've seen a Cronenberg movie. You should watch a different one. <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna say maybe not the best, but I, when I have time, I promise I'm gonna watch. You know, I we should say we record some of these episodes in advance, yeah. and I have the next two weeks off from editing these things. So there you go. maybe I'll watch Easter Promises and maybe I'll watch. I, I want to watch. It's a history of violence. that has got the 69 in it, right? <laughs> yeah. Did I bring I brought that up earlier this season, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did. I'm going to watch that with Priscilla because I know she's never seen it either. So that'll be a treat for us. <laughs> she's never seen a 69. Mm-mm, never seen what in her life. That sucks. She's a couple of 68s, but that's about it. <laughs> <Hey-o. laughs> that's gross. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyway, well, all right, Nathan, thank you for putting the dead zone on this on the calendar. Sure thing, man. Let's get in. Uh, well, let's get out of here. Yeah. So next week we can get into some spooky stuff. But until then, until we're talking about spooky stuff and whether you should stay or whether you should go. Right. Recipes oatmeal. And Donald Pleasance. I'm not going to say Donald Pleasance. Oh, no. Because I'm only reserving him for the spooky linings. OK. He only gets the spooky linings. That makes sense. Yeah. Or if we ever do another Bond movie. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So yeah, recipes, oatmeal, and oatmeal alone. Sure. No one else or nothing else ever. (laughs) And (laughs) as always, the ice is gonna break. It's good. That's pretty good. (laughs) Is that good? I don't know. I can't I can't do walking. No, it's good. I mean it was like if Bobcat Goldthwaite played Christopher Walken. (laughs) The ice. (laughs) The ice is gonna break. Break. (laughs) Excelsior. 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 up another fantastic episode of the silver linings playlist if you would be so kind we ask that you leave us some feedback on how we did plus a like and subscribe we'll be back next week with another great episode see ya